Welcome to Help with Natalie Cuomo, the podcast about a girl who just can't help herself. Of help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm so excited. We have two awesome guests in studio today. Uh, we have comedian Katie Boyle. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for being here. And we have content creator Marcella Alonzo. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. So this week, what I need help with is I think we're going to talk about love, intimacy, sex. You are a great adult content creator. Katie has a sex podcast called The Shift. I felt like you guys would be a perfect duo to mm -hmm. uh, sort through some listener questions and just talk about love. I love it. Yeah. How are you guys? Wonderful. Great. I'm tired. Ch chatty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired a little bit. But You're tired? Yeah, it's very early. But I have my tea. And you have your slug water. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so oh, you you found a slug in the water. I found a slug in the water. <laughs> yes. Well, you know the thing is that, that slug it's actually an aphrodisiac. <laughs> well, we were just talking before the show that you were on special protein diet. So this is like extra oh, protein, protein on the slug. <laughs> <laughs> on the show, uh, I think it may be a leaf, though. I don't know what. Oh, okay. It may be. Okay. You know, I often eat leaves when I'm playing with children because they like to <laughs> pretend that I'm a horse and they're feeding me carrots. Okay. Well, you should do an episode. <laughs> and help that stop eating leaves. <laughs> so, guys, I asked you, what is the best advice that you have ever received? You go first. Um, my father told me, always keep your options open when dating. Oh, always. Like if they if they're not gonna um, put a ring on your finger or be committed, you should always, you know, still take in consideration another suitor. So, at what point do you commit? When they have the ring, <laughs> like that's what it is, you know. Or when to, you know when the rules are established by the you know. Okay. Yeah. So when your boyfriend and girlfriend, when there's like a serious conversation. I, I feel like when you're living together. Okay. Oh my god. You gosh. know, to take it a little wow. bit step. Like, yeah. Wow. And have you always lived by this rule? Um, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. God, I am <laughs> such a monogamous. Queen. I am a serial I, monogamous. I actually though believe that we should be able to have two husbands. So I'm I all, can't even It's called poly one. uh it's called I think it's called poly God because you always hear about polygamy, but you hear men having multiple. But I'm like, why can we not have multiple men? Yeah, there is a woman in Africa and she has like nine husbands in the town and they only are married to her. Now, I would you it. feel comfortable? <laughs> I mean, she's the queen. Yeah. And when yeah. I said queen before, I didn't mean like the way Americans say because you guys are like queen. I meant as in like she's the queen. I meant as in like I'm, I'm like really love monogamy. Uh, but like, yeah, she's she's uh, she's the queen. Wow. Yeah, I don't want that though. Fuck I don't that. want I can that either. Do we're talking to one the whole time. Never mind. And I'm happy with one. I feel like I don't want to suck nine dicks. That's way too many. I don't even. Sometimes but I just don't. Even maybe want you to have don't sex. have sex with one. Uh -huh. Maybe you know each relationship's different. One's physical, one's sexual. Well, just be your friend. Mm -hmm. Have a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, yeah. what do you feel? Do you feel like there's a double standard there? Or you feel like open to uh, like pretty much open relationships? Like the man can also date multiple women. Um, I'm more dominant. So it, I would be playing by my rules. So <laughs> so what are your what are your rules in a relationship? Um, I, I really do enjoy being with a submissive man, a man that caters to me. Um, growing up, I watched my grandparents relationship where my grandmother ran my grandfather and um you know he he served her but then she also respected him at the same time so it wasn't so much of you know it's not degrading a man either you know it's a man taking care of you taking care of your needs and sometimes it's better i feel like it's better just to be single till you get the right person yeah. like why waste your time mm -hmm. in the wrong relationship when mm -hmm. you can um, and that's what my father, he didn't tell me, like, go be a slut. What he was saying, basically, you know, don't stop talking to different people. You know, mm. don't be like right away, oh, I have a boyfriend. No, if the person's not committed to you, 
You know, you don't know. There, yes, there's going to be guys talking to you, but, you know, wait to make sure that person comes to you. Because guys do it the whole, themselves. Like, they always, yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of guys, they'll be in a relationship, but they're not going to admit it. And if you notice, a lot of guys on social media won't admit that they're in a relationship. They always want to seem like they have a chance. Right. So reverse the table and do the same thing until they fully commit it to you. Yeah. Huh. Get them on their knees. Can I say something about the submissive thing? Uh -huh. I don't think a guy catering for you is submissive. I think that's just like a standard that they should be. Well, they should be like, like, I I think that's even like, a, like some men might not see it as a manly thing, but I think it's a manly thing to yeah. like take care of your woman right. and make her breakfast in the morning and want her to be happy. I never thought of it as a submissive thing until you said it. I always yeah. thought like, oh, yeah, they should do that. Right. But I didn't think it was me being like dominant. I just want to be like spoiled in those things like i want them to take care of me right some men think of that as them being dominant because like you're like the the girl that can't do anything and they have to kind of like wait on you hand and foot almost like oh. it, you know what i mean yeah so i guess it's just whatever your perception it's the way that you it. think of it maybe i don't yeah. know yeah what well, do you growing think? up like i said my grandmother she made the rules of the house and my grandfather respected them you know um, do you, man, I had such Oops. a good question in my head and it left. Mm -hmm. Oh, was it about when you were saying don't commit to a guy until, and then you had said, no, are you a currently in a relationship? No, no. And do you, oh, do you feel like that attitude of like, I'm not going to commit until they commit, uh, comes from being hurt? What do you feel? Or do you think it just comes from like a logical, rational perspective of like, I'm not going to make myself ultra vulnerable until they have shown me that it's safe to do so. Um, for the bo it's like keeping um, boundaries mm. for me. I feel like okay because again, if you like, I've always had another thing that I've always done. If I've always been friends first, mm. so instead of just jump to a relationship, so I've always had friends with a uh, lot of male friends. You know, because I kind of can see their behavior before. What is your astrological sign? Gemini. And what is yours? Libra. <laughs> okay. I'm a Sagittarius for anyone listening who cares. But, um, okay, it's interesting because I am completely the opposite. Like, when I am with someone, A, I'm obsessed with monogamy. Like, whew, I could not handle any type of polygamy at all. And um, I feel like when I meet someone, it's like, we are in love right away. We're committed. Day number two, like I'm talking about our, I'm naming our kids, I'm planning our wedding. Like that's, it. I have like the complete opposite personality. I will say sometimes it works out, sometimes you get hurt. So it's not the most rational way to go, but sometimes it works out. I'd be similar more to you. Yeah. But I have had like, pe like there was a dating expert on my podcast and he was saying a lot of women will commit to a guy before he's ever committed to them. And he says it's very important for women to keep their options open. But he does it sooner than you. He says when you've had the con until you've had the conversation that your boyfriend, girlfriend, then don't you don't need to. But keep your options open until then. Right. Because you want to be choosing, not chosen. Oh. And the my boyfriend now, that was the so anytime I met anybody i'd always just be automatically monogamous to them or loyal to them without right. even having a conversation and i was always treated like shite and my boyfriend now was the first one that before i met him i was seeing multiple guys now when i did meet him because i know him i stopped seeing them mm -hmm. but it was the first time i was like casually dating multiple people and then when i did kiss him though i just automatically was exclusive because i've known <laughs> him for years and i know he's like a relationship guy and then we were in a relationship like three weeks later so I feel like I just genuinely don't know how to date multiple people at once. That like, was the first time I ever did that. And it wasn't great because you only see them like once a week. And then I was forgetting who I was saying. But also it was kind of like, oh, at least I'm not concentrating on one person and trying right. to figure out what I like. But right. yeah, I'm happy. I like one person getting to know them. And yeah. I don't I, I, I don't be get mixed up with my stories. I also don't <laughs> repeat. Well, you, it isn't that you just like men. What well, you don't realize when men are dating women. Yeah. A lot of times they're dating multiple. Right. So it's just the tables turn. It's yeah. not getting your stories mixed up. It's, oh, I went out with a friend. Right. That's all you have to say. You well, you're very anything. you're very empowered. Like, I not really like, I really respect I went out that. With a yeah. Friend. You're not you're not lying. They're yeah. a friend. They're right, not nobody right. committed. 
Katie, what is the best advice you've ever received? Does it have to be dating relationship? No, it could be anything. It could okay, be anything. Because now I have two. Okay. Well, well, no, you do whatever you want. Well, first, no rules. First was my stepmom, and I can't remember exactly what she said, but she's I'm a real people pleaser. Mm-hmm. Mm, me too. And I do too much for people, and then it becomes the what they expect without them ever doing anything in return. And if I when I set boundaries, they get really mad, and it's like, wait, I'm not your emotional dog or I'm not your therapist or I'm not your like you know and it's happened with friends and guys Mm -hmm. so my stepmom once was like you need to suit yourself and it's not a selfish thing but then everybody so like if you don't want to get up in the morning to help somebody like if you have work you can say no and I never I'd always be like running myself into the ground trying to help all my friends help my partner in any way and so she was just like suit yourself uh, but if you're a selfish person, that doesn't work. You need to stop doing that. It's only works for people pleasers. <laughs> and then my dad, he said something similar about you, what you said, but it was different. But he, well, he guess he was like a guy will. He believes that men will show you they're interested. They will commit to you if they want you. There's no like. I think here I really need to cough, but I don't have COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Oh my god, that was so scary. Um. I think he was, it was something like how, you know, the way here, everybody's real chill and you just like, it's like, oh, well, the guy might only want to see you once a week. And it's like casual. He was like, when a guy is into you, they show it. They like turn up, they make the effort, Mm -hmm. they make you their girlfriend. There's no bullshit and anything else where they're like, I'm not ready or I just want to see where things go. He's like, they're not that into you. So don't fool yourself. I think that's a very good point. If you're saying, I don't know if he likes me, he probably doesn't like you. And he's just happy keeping you on just because when he gets bored or whatever. But there is that attitude in New York, like, just be chill. And then you could be chill for six months and you've wasted six months (laughs) given a girlfriend experience. It's interesting. Why do you think there are so many? I think it's much more common for women to be having this internal dialogue of like, does he like me? I'm, I'm attached before he's attached. And... I do think that that happens with men, but it seems to be more common that women get attached to men more quickly or or feel like they're waiting, as you said, to be chosen instead of to choose like, okay, yes, you are my boyfriend. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe in New York, I guess there's just so many lads and it's just such a fuck culture. Like it's (laughs) like it is. It's like, let's fuck and have fun. I also think and I'm totally generalizing men, but I think they're more in the moment than women are. Whatever way we're like built we're more mm. of a like thinking about like what's happening next week, what's happening next month, what's happening next year. And they make the decision right in the moment. If that's like a girl's hitting them on a bar, they might not think about the consequences tomorrow. Right. Like, you know, you sometimes you'll tell your fella, you'll like say like, oh, you know, I get really bad UTIs when I have sex. And then like a week later, they're like, do you want to stop using condoms? And you're like, we, ju- we just, <laughs> we just, and they're like, oh, I forgot. And I'm like, but it was six days ago and I just think I've, right. every man I've dated they always go yeah I forgot because I just think they're just they can only deal with about 24 hours of information right so right. I think that helps is the same in dating they're just like not as long term based and they they think they've more time than us they're like I can settle down when I'm 40 50 and it's like no well men men stick and move I say every man should stick and move to they're about 35 I feel like at 35, that's when a man should settle down. Like, because yeah. their maturity level is not as much, but women want to settle down earlier. Yeah. So, and also, you need to think men do think with their dicks, number one. Mm. So, as a woman, like, I'm very aware because I deal with a lot of men every day and I see it. <laughs> and, you know, some men don't know the approach. Like, they want to be in a relationship, but they don't know how to talk to right, a woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, women. It's like you kind of first have to understand men, you know, what they want to like they like if they like sports, if they like they have a weird hobby, you know, like you, when you are when you do meet a guy, you kind of got to support that whatever it's a weird hobby or sports or whatever. You can't be, oh, it's all about me. I actually yeah. got like in trouble in a Facebook group one time because a girl said, oh, I'm getting my boyfriend um, for his birthday, a, a playlist of love songs. And I said, hey. I don't think that's a good gift. I said, what? And then they they all came at me that I was sexist. And I said, you know, if he likes sports or whatever. And they all came at me like I was wrong. Well, not even a month later, she was broken up from the guy. Again, Mm. you have to like, you know, you got to think about how men think and cater to their, not cater to their needs, but like, let's say, you know, they like Sundays, their football. Right. Leave them alone. 
Leave right. them the fuck alone. Well, I will yeah. say I've been in a lot of situationships and I have learned a lot of fucking sports, okay? Yeah. And our relationships or situationships that all failed, I watched MMA because one guy was like, you can come over, but MMA is my love. So we got to watch it all night. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then he was like, basically like, you know, you're so special that I let you watch MMA with me. And I'm like, you're I'm like sitting here. Well, but, <laughs> but, that, but what you have to do in that situation, is, oh, it's MMA. Okay, honey, leave him alone. And go do your thing. No, but yeah, it, it, you know, like that's what you have to do. Like, yeah, but also when someone wants you, I'm mm-hmm. fine. Learn, I, I'm, yeah. I am actually, fi- I actually find it really fun and interesting. When someone wants to share that with you, I'm fine doing that. Yeah, but I have watched all the basketball because yeah. the partner was like, "We're going to do the basketball." Like, I don't think I think a lot of women do do that. They do, you know, uh, watch the sports. Or mm-hmm. I had a boyfriend who was big into rugby, and I would go and do that with him. And that's what? I, I. I think more women do do that. A lot yeah, of my so, some women do. But what I'm saying is, if that's not your thing, if it's really not your thing, but that's their thing, give them a little space. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. just what's what I mean? Like, give them. It's the same with guys. Like, I've dated so many possessive guys who, like, wouldn't give me my space either. I, right. So I don't think it's a gender thing. I think mm-hmm. it's. Like I do a, think that when a guy is like, I, I feel like the problem with that story is that he's like, you're so special that I'm allowing you to be part of my thing yeah. and instead of instead of being like hey i'm so excited to share this with you and i think that's like the difference like when a guy wants to share like hey i really want you to come watch this fight with me because i love this and i want you to love this too i think that's awesome right. and again they're but like it's off they're, they don't have the maturity. He didn't have yeah. the maturity to right. say the right thing. Because right. he invited me over. Right. I was doing shows that night. I was right. doing my own thing. Yeah. And right. The, yeah. For is... him to like make you feel like, oh, you're so lucky that yeah. you get to sit on the couch next to me while I fucking do this. <laughs> it's like, I think sometimes men don't know how to be like hey katie i love you and i love mma so like i want to share this with you yeah and it's frustrating because the the phrasing i'm a sensitive person that would make me feel like uh it it, it is interesting i know a lot about much dorkier things because of my taste in men <laughs> so <laughs> i know my boyfriend there like settlers of Catan. <laughs> just like but i've left him alone every saturday to play <laughs> so i learned about fucking settlers of Catan. what's that said it's a oh, board it's game. So oh, okay. Marcella, I have a question for you. So, oh. what is uh, what is like the one thing, or maybe not even the one thing, but what's something that you've learned, like making adult content from these interactions with men? What's something that you've learned about men, kind of taking that like behind the scenes peek at their brains and like having having that view of them? What's something that you learned that maybe people wouldn't expect? Um, the younger ones are actually better because I can mold them and <laughs> better. Um, older guys, that's why I say the stick and move age at 35. Okay. So when you're dating, like, keep in mind, like a guy really does need to sell his oats to about 35 years old. So, right. So like if a guy's under 30, if he, if he does want to settle down, like I have cousins that was married at 27, but I still feel like he married too young. Um, you know, after 35, like, you know, if they're not settled down, that's where it tends to have a little bit of issues, you know? Okay. Yeah. Not all, not all, but what you know, do you mean men in issue? general. What do you what do you mean? Issues? Not all, but men in general. I understand them. I feel like um, they just want to get off. They they need to get off. Mm-hmm. Then sometimes they don't want no commitment. Okay, and or maybe they are in a relationship and they just want to get off for that moment. And okay. you know, usually by porn they get that chance and then they go about their day and they're, that's it. Like. You know, so the, and and uh, I notice men have the same habits. Every man has the same habits. Too. What do you mean? Um, like in dating or approaching or anything, because I I get guys um, on one of my pages, um, on my social media pages, and you'll see the same thing. And then I'll have a girlfriend, and they'll say the same thing. So men right. have their approach is always the same mm. in general. Yeah. Right. It's interesting when you like see your friend who works in the same field and and someone's approaching them the right. same and way. And so probably like also if you've dated somebody and then you run into somebody's dated them then and they did the exact same thing. Like right. men have they do this they have the right. same patterns. They're very simple. Yeah. Yeah, they're interesting. Very simple. Interesting. Okay. Well, my boyfriend's young um and he's the first person since I moved here who wanted to be in an exclusive relationship very quickly. Mm-hmm. Treats me better than anyone I've ever treated. Uh, some young like, ones do you know it's it's rare but like in general you know i'm not saying like everybody you yeah. know that but ju- he's very open uh, like i know him from comedy and in, uh-huh. even his comedy was i don't like hooking up i want a girlfriend so he just he hates hookup culture he doesn't 
So like that's rare, I find. Katie, so I, I knew him for four years before. Should we circle back? So I just did Katie's podcast, mm-hmm. and we had a full, <laughs> we had a full hour long conversation. She reserved the topic just for me about ass play. Okay. Oh, I, she was like, I, she's like, with I'm men with, or yes, with oh, men. I, okay, like you, uh, are you pegging? A, yeah, not pegging. Oh, okay, just darn finger, it. Fi- oh. Just a finger, a, maybe a tongue. No, no, I no. never will do oh, the tongue. Why? I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> you got cut to Katie. I just can't. <laughs> um, I love the tongue, but anyway, we had a whole conversation. Did. When you put the episode out, we were talking because Katie's boyfriend um, wants a finger, a finger in the. In oh, the that's butt. normal. Yeah, right. That's normal. I've never done that before, so I, it just feels intimidating to me because it's like a new sexual. I find a well, lot of because things- it's, it it actually gives them a better orgasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were we were having a conversation about that. I actually feel like you'd be a great person to give your input on <laughs> on uh, a finger in the butt. No, that's just that's normal. It's not. Um, I think so because they have an intense, and a, you could feel the prostate. Not with my nails that I have on, but if you just you know a little bit, and then you grab a hold, and they have like an intense orgasm. So how far up though? You you'll feel the little walnut, sh- uh, the prostate. I'll feel it. A little yeah, bit. you'll feel it, and then what you do is you <laughs> melt the cock during that time. You get some lube, and then you just wank it. Yeah, wank it exactly okay. like this. So. Wow. Yeah. It's an intense orgasm. I look, this is why <laughs> I see. I find, have you read the book A Brave Dear World? No, 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 no. I, I read this book, one well, smartest book I ever read. Wow. But I think about it every time someone asks me to do a new sex thing. He's basically like, it's like a sci fi book, but he's like living in the woods and he comes out and the world's all <laughs> different than what he expected. And it's just so wild. He's like, wants to go back to the woods. He ends up killing himself. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. But that's what I feel with sex stuff. I yeah. feel like I've come from a different planet and you guys are all like like licking balls the first, uh, first time a guy asked me to lick a balls i nearly had a fucking heart attack <laughs> i was like in naked and they I they have didn't... to have shave balls for me to lick them yeah but i didn't <laughs> really know how to do that like i know it sounds simple like what's the best it. way to lick a ball you just lick them just like a blow you know yeah, just like a blow job painful. yeah you just lick them but they have to be shaved i've always honestly so i'm not someone that watches porn like i feel like i'd I'd like to like use my imagination and I feel like that's the one thing that I wish I knew more about is licking balls. But it's just like like, like, a, like uh, a lollipop. Like a lollipop, right. You see <laughs> But it's hard when someone asks you to do that and you've no And you're we, just like uh, Or you could just put them in your mouth and suck on them. Well, that was my, because this was years ago. And when the guy asked me, I was literally naked thinking, do I put it in my mouth and suck it or do I lick it? Because that's, blow the, jobs. that's the key question. Yeah, because blowjobs, you know, they, they're they not what they sound like they are. They are. They're very different. You don't blow on it. And then I, yeah, right? <laughs> and then I heard about the Glock Glock the recently. Glock. So it's where you you twist while you're giving a blowjob. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah. never heard no. I never heard that term, but it needs to be a real big dick. So my boyfriend's like, dick is great, but it's like it doesn't need a Glock Glock. <laughs> but I think that's like you're like, it's like I don't know. But you could do one hand Glock. You could do a Glock. Right. right. But that's so much to learn. <laughs> there is a lot. I had a horrifying moment where I lost a butt plug in my ass. Oh, my God. Stop. Oh. I went on a Zoom It date. was so horrifying. Luckily, we got it out. But wow. I mean, that kind of shit is sc- I mean, that will make you bond. You know, it really yeah. it will make you be like, you know what? Wow. You don't want to go to the ER. Well, I was just <laughs> no, he was, he was he was like, "All right, babe, calm down. It's fine. Just oh like, just relax. Just push." I was like, <gasps> "Okay." <laughs> uh, I went on a date with a, a ER guy, and he said ev- the most people come in are with shit shook. No, bars. it's crazy because you would expect them to be. I it was actually when I think about it in retrospect, I'm like, that is literally horrifying that that just happened. I will never be using that again. Was that recently? No. Was it after our podcast? No. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Well, so I guess the no. 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 It was before. No. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to our next segment. No, I broke it. Um, <laughs> okay. um well, guys. So you finger earth the whole time. Hmm? You finger it the whole time. 
Not the whole, t- like, just depends, you know. Okay, I'm excited. If that's what they want. But you've got to feel like the walnut shape because that's the walnut. prostate. Walnut. Oh. Like, it, that's what the prostate is. And you just rubbed that? I yeah, have never felt massage- the walnut. I feel like I've been doing everything <laughs> wrong. And can I ask you one more question? I am, I've am. i noticed you also like acrylics, mm-hmm. nails, okay? Do you feel like that affects things? Like, I honestly am able to pleasure myself more when I don't have acrylics, but I love acrylics. And I feel like, it, does it hurt with with acrylics? Oh, I haven't done with recently with these. These are sharp on purpose because I also um, do BDSM, so I like to squeeze the balls and yeah. Oh, tell uh, us, tell uh, us more. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, yeah. So I am a trained dominatrix, but um, I do like grabbing the balls and just squishing them like that. Yeah. What do you learn as a trained dominatrix? Different stuff. Like, what What is like the coolest thing? Like, teach us something that you learned. Well, the the favorite thing I do like is I like flogging. I enjoy pegging. What's flogging? Um, it's a long device mm-hmm. it has stuff at the end. I should have brought it, and uh, it's like an art, but it doesn't really hurt. Okay, so. like the thing the monks would do to make themselves feel bad. So God, I love them. Yeah, but it doesn't. It, <laughs> That's okay. More, he knows what it was. There's this. <laughs> Of like their sensual <laughs> domination, um, like I've learned different aspects of like, bondage and yeah, but I haven't been since the pandemic. I haven't had as right. much fun lately. As... Yeah, they're too sad now. Can't imagine it's fun. Do you feel like you do you know how to do like rope stuff? Like do you know fancy knots? I feel like that's almost nerdy. You know what I I've taken classes and I've done it, and then I'll because I'm not doing it a lot you know the pandemic mm-hmm. affected a lot of my business so right. um i'm not really skilled on that but i know people that are like you know can you do that thing where i forgot the actual word where they're like hang they're hanging from the ceiling oh no 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 no, no. that's too too much fun. that's that's yeah. when they back accidentally a lot of people huh oh no 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 not being <laughs> like, not that's... hanging from the neck katie <laughs> 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 have no, you, it's, have uh, you killed anyone Japanese, during sex? <laughs> that's a Japanese form. Um, I forgot what it's called, but I just saw that at a convention. Shibari? Sh- yeah. Oh, he knew. Yeah. Shibari. Yeah. I like um, being tied against the bedpost, but nobody in New York has a feckin' bedpost. That was, that was so Irish funny. thing, I guess. <laughs> and no one here has there a mattress. Is, actually, <laughs> um, you could buy it where it's like underneath the bed you put it underneath the bed and then you do it like oh that. interesting okay. i yeah. think i like that the thing that i've always felt is like with my ex Stock room. we were like we used a uh, website we we're like ha- well my ex and i were like having sex and like then he just like had a rope and i was like this is you shouldn't just have a rope like i feel like you need to buy things to- it weirded me out that he already had it and I felt like he had to make up, like, he's like, no, 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 my old friend and I, we had a rope because of this. And I'm like, then why are you so good at tying knots, motherfucker? He could have been a Boy Scout. Though. I was just... <laughs> Eagle Scout. <laughs> Tori Piskin has a great story about that, where she went home with a guy and he just randomly pulled out a box of, like, ropes, handcuffs, and was just like, you want to use this? Mm-hmm. But she was like, okay, there should have been a conversation about this before. Right. I feel like a lot of people experimenting don't understand like the nuances of like aftercare of bdsm like Mm -hmm. for me like in 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 the times that i've experimented with like more aggressive sex play i feel like me like maybe like the the importance of like aftercare after that is is very significant to me and i think it's something that people don't talk about enough what is aftercare i feel like some people need like a certain level of like like you don't just like you kind of comfort them yeah wrap them up like yeah wrap them up and like check on them usually lasts about 10 minutes so like bring them down back down yeah Yeah, it's like it's like you're not just gonna like beat someone and then be like see a bitch like you can't really (laughs) although some people want that yes right but exactly, yeah. it's a conversation that I yeah. think you need to have before you participate in stuff like that. And I think some people don't realize that. And then that. also, it's it's com- a lot of communication beforehand with the limits. You know, what somebody feels comfortable, what they don't feel comfortable with beforehand, knowing beforehand. If a guy, like, flogged me, I'd punch him in the face. But I like being tied up, but I just wouldn't want to be, like, I wouldn't want them. 
Right, that's why you're communicating yeah. beforehand. Right. I had a guy and he used to like punch me in the ass when we were having sex. But I was what? Like, that's a little, that's I a little know, much. Right? <clears throat> He's deported now anyway, so. Um, so guys, I am trying this fun new segment on my podcast where we look at old uh, vintage love advice columns. We're going to read the questions. We're going to answer them ourselves. And then we're going to see what the answers were before. Are you guys? I love this. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. All right. So the, uh, the first question is, um, coming okay (laughs) it's from doris blake's love answers okay he's badly scared dear miss blake i was going with a fellow i told him i loved him now he doesn't talk to me not even to say hello what would your advice be and that's it that's all she said that's all she said to doris blake she well she just scared him she literally scared him and he probably was overwhelmed and he's not feeling reciprocal. So what she needs to just do is back off. Yeah, give him space yeah. and move on. So that's that's <laughs> just simple rejection. Yeah, get over it. She said, I love you. He won't, he's like, ugh, he's she terrified. She might have said it too soon. Yeah, especially back in the day, they'd say it after like third date or something. Do you feel, are you the, oh, usually the first one to say I love you or are they? Um, no, them, but I sometimes kind of like coax it out of them. Mm. <laughs> what about you? Uh, they usually tell me. You're like, yeah, they that's usually right. tell me. <laughs> and then you're like, I'll say it if I feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> I will love them, but I, I hate saying it first. I find it like really vulnerable. It's so vulnerable to say I love you to someone the first time when you really love them. It feels like the craziest thing to say. Yeah. And then once you've said it a bunch, it's just like, it's just like saying I took a shit. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so true. All right, so what's our advice to this person? Because let's be kind to them. What should we say to LLB? Move on. Move on. Yeah, move, move on. on. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what they said. Okay, <laughs> let's see. All right. He's been scared so badly that he doesn't even dare to speak to you. Too bad you use such poor technique, honey. Next time you fall in love, be more cagey. The successful girl with boys... Whoa, who keeps them wondering? Is she who keeps them wondering just how she does feel? Mm. I feel like it's good that she was transparent because now she knows she can move on. He doesn't feel the same way. I agree with you. I don't think if she had been like, yeah, maybe she scared him, but I also think if someone likes you, I guess depending on the amount of time, but let's say it's a few months in, um, that you wouldn't scare them so yeah I don't think he would have fallen in love with her if she never said that like I don't think it would have progressed and he would have been like oh she's mysterious like he just didn't feel the same way I don't think she messed it up I agree it's I feel like it's a game with them you do yeah because by not really showing I've noticed that like in the past when I've dated by not showing really so much and really I've taken care of myself first they've been more on top of me yeah yeah. I think it's, I totally agree with taking care of yourself first. Yeah. But I think pretending to be chill and not interested is a very bad game. And I think you're, by doing that, you attract the wrong type of man, like a man who just wants to chase you all the time. Then when you eventually let your guard down, not, yeah, it's just not healthy. I think it's good to be direct and honest. And if they're not interested, fine, move on to the right. next. But I agree with you, would still look after yourself. Look Don't after be like yourself fondling first. over yeah. them and texting them every second. But yeah, if they're not showing it, Their actions will show more than also words. So true. That's what my dad said as well. (gasps) My therapist says love is an action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's the thing. During the week, what are they doing? Are they calling? Are they checking on you? What actions are they doing for you? Not what they're saying because a man can lie because just because he wants to have sex with you. So true. So you've got to be aware of that. I feel like that was a big thing. Like my ex, my ex that I was engaged to, he was a beautiful writer like he wrote the most beautiful thing like he was so good at like verbal affirmation Mm -hmm. but his actions were shit like I paid for his phone bill like it was you know like he lived with me in my mom's basement so it's really crazy like when you when you take a look at words versus actions Mm -hmm. it's it's so yeah I I always think about that he's like love is an action quote from the Dalai Lama also Katy Perry said that once (laughs) (laughs) it's so true Oh, he said that or Katy Perry said that? 
I don't know. My therapist said oh, both did. Oh, yeah. He's so right. She, he also quotes Britney Spears all the time. You know what? Like, Britney's great. Take care of yourself first. As Britney said, you got to work, bitch. I love your therapist. <laughs> but my, my boyfriend makes me tea and breakfast every morning, no right. matter where we're staying, which I love. Like mm-hmm. it's not and it's not like, oh, it's your turn to make me breakfast or tea now. He just gets up and does it or he like makes I know it's only basic things, but like anytime he's leaving my apartment, he goes in and makes a bed. He goes and washes the dishes. Right. He makes sure I'm as comfortable as possible. Like I had to go to the doctor the other day to get like a toe thingy. But he like came with me and brought Aww. me for lunch before and then like bought stuff for the house and he's just so caring. Yeah, and see the actions. Yeah. 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 The little things that yeah. they do. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, should we look at one more? Yeah. Should we play? Do, 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 uh-huh. do, do, do. <laughs> There's like those TikTok where they do that whole music dance. Yeah. Now. That song is stuck in my head now. I really want to be able to do those TikToks where you do like the transformations, but I can't. Oh, with the different outfits? Yeah. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Oh. You should do that. I know. I want to. I should do that and just do me and my shorts. And the <laughs> same. <laughs> just like my wear these like football shorts a lot, like Irish football shorts. I love it. All right. Jesus. Oh, why chasm? Dear Miss Blake, I am a widow in love with a man 15 years younger. He has asked me to marry him, but I have not given him my answer. Do you think I could be happy? Yeah. Yeah. I think kill it should be killing it. He's fifteen years younger. Yeah, and, and so many men marry women who are fifteen years younger. And he's probably like gonna dote on her. He's obviously like, This is great. Yay. Get yours. <laughs> Man, a guy fifteen years younger than me would be eleven and <laughs> would be eleven. Yeah, but she must be like, so she's a widow, let's say she's probably fifty, he's thirty five. That's what I'm going with. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's kinda hot. Yeah, and men die younger, so we should be going for younger. I don't want to be left alone. <laughs> I don't e- I don't want like I don't want to be left alone. I feel like you know what? I've always felt like love is um letting them die first because then you're alone. Yeah, so I'm dying first. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be alone. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like men mature a lot more slowly. I don't think I would ever go for a younger guy. Yeah, I thought so too. And now my boyfriend's five years younger than me. So, yeah. Well, their equipment stops working sometimes after, I think, 45, though. You know what? It really? slows down. Yeah, the equipment stops really working as their testosterone level mm. huh. goes down. So, that's the thing. So, well, also, there's a lot more men struggling with like ED now and mm. like younger men because of like weed and all of that stuff and booze. Right. Whereas, my boyfriend now, he's much younger, but he's the first guy that I've been with in America that hasn't struggled with, like, ED or, like, performance wow. anxiety. He's just, like, fucking, I'd be like, mm, part of a boob? And he's, like, hard as a rock. My 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 boyfriend now, we have, I've never had more sex with anyone in my life. I mean, it's, and he's older. So I don't know if it has to do with Oh, I also feel bad now because I just totally forgot, like, the three guys that the, in the past year who didn't have <laughs> that, but I mean I've had a lot of experience because no I think that there are people especially people that do a lot of drugs I yeah. feel like that affects their yeah. sex drive yeah but after I think when they start napping that's when the <laughs> testosterone when they have to have if an your man nap. starts napping if they, yeah if they're nappers but that is not till make like, sure he at least is rich. past 45 <laughs> yeah but not all men you know right. as they just need to get it checked um, alright let's see what she said the cards are stacked pretty much against you with such an age disparity can't you find a man your own age or a couple of years older boo Mm. advice con woman interesting well there is a total double standard total double standard this is back in the day it's interesting when i was looking up uh these articles i i found so many things that were like about a woman's role of like being a housewife Mm. and I'm honestly torn lately because I'm kind of a housewife and I like it. Yeah. It's just hard to be a housewife and a comedian who's doing other things. But like if I'm just a housewife, like it's fucking chill. Yeah. 
I wouldn't mind <laughs> being like the house cleaner and cooking the food. Yeah. Once I can go out and do comedy at night, if they're paying for everything else, I'd be like, yeah, that'd be great. It's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, for me. You're like, I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> um, Would you ever be a housewife? No. 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 Even though I'm always in the house, like I have a housekeeper who comes every other week. Um, I do clean up after myself, but if usually the relationships I've been in, they've done their the cooking and the cleaning. What do you think yeah. the key is to a happy, long-lasting relationship? Um, finding somebody you're compatible with, that you understand each other, that you respect each other's space, um, and that you accept each other for everything that you, you know, whatever you have. Like somebody has to, for me, they have to accept everything. This is who I am and I'm upfront about it. So, and non-judgmental. Right. You can't change anyone. Yeah. What about you, Katie? Um... I don't know. I, I'll i just use... I haven't had a long-term relationship. I'm in a five-month relationship now, but mm-hmm. haven't had a long-term one in eight years. And that one before was a complete failure. But... <laughs> oh, God, such a mess. But my dad is in a 20-year relationship with my stepmom. And he... When he was visiting here, he never drinks, but he, like, just was drinking for the weekend because he was, like, didn't have responsibilities. And my friend was upset about the guy she was dating. And he said, you need to date someone who's, like, your best friend. Because he was like, a lot of time we go for like attractive people or what we're attracted oh, to. Yes. Yeah. And he said that's important. But long term, it's, do you know, are you going to like them? Are they like someone you, who can support you? And and she then actually ended up breaking off with the fella. And she's now engaged to her best friend. Oh, but I so think, cute. I think that's really important because I think the attraction stuff, like if you're just like, if it's all about sex and attraction, that can wear you off be pretty friends first, Yeah. Yeah, someone yeah, who's like the a friend. Yeah, fr- the, being the friend to me, that's the most important thing beforehand because you could be with somebody with looks, but then it, it's just what what else is there? Yes. Yeah, what else, you know? Right, yeah. And I, somebody that understands your job, that's yeah. another thing because um, so certain people, um, for instance, I was I, somebody was talking and they were dating somebody and they had an issue with what they posted on IG and I was like, but your job you kind of have to do that. This person was in beauty. And I'm like, I was like, forget that. <laughs> like, you're, you kind of have to do that. You have to present yourself that your right. IG is your business. So, you know, you can't have the jealous, too much jealousy. They have to understand that, you know, what you, you know, respect your job. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And if you're working at night, like somebody that's not going to say, hey, what are you doing you know, at a nightclub at, all the time? Or you must be doing trust. The, right, trust. Yeah. Trust is. So I feel like trust and communication and honesty are it's so cliche, but it's genuinely the most important. Like if you can trust your partner. I feel like that's the most important thing. And yeah. just being honest all the time. And just saying like I find with men sometimes they take a second to think. So like a, a, they they process things slower or they're afraid to say they're something. retarded. I know. <laughs> that's so true. But they're afraid to say something in case they get in trouble. And then a month later, they'll bring up something. And I'm like, that should have happened at the time. And they were like, well, I was kind of nervous. And it's like, I think I was not like worrying about an argument. Like, just say what's going on. Because right. give people more the benefit for the doubt. Because I want to hear if there's an issue. I don't want to hear it a fucking month later when I right. could have just dealt with it at the time. Right. So communication is so important. Right. Yeah. Wow, guys, this was an awesome episode. Is there anything you want to plug? Katie, mm. you go first. I have, oh, yeah, come listen to Nally's episode on The Shift. We uh-huh. talk about finger and arses. So that's The Shift, and I'm at Katie Boyle Comic on everything. Awesome. And Marcella? Um, they can follow me on my IG. It's Marcella Sobella. Um, or if they want to go to any of my sites, it's MarcellaSobella.com. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and doing the podcast. This was so much fun. Um, And I'll see everybody next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Help with Natalie Cuomo. Tune in next week for another episode. Find us on social media at Help with Natalie.